Hi, Cindy. Hi, Kelly. Great to have you on Heartbeats today. Um, today, I'll be asking you five questions about your stories and hospitality. So let's start with the first one. So what do you do and how long have you been working in hospitality? Well, I work in the hotel industry and for around six years already. Okay. What do you do? Oh, I work as an assistant front office manager who in charge of the front office duties. Ah, okay, great. Um, Cindy, I'm curious, what brings you into hospitality? So how did you start hospitality in the first place? Well, I think the reason why I make this decision to join the hospitality industry is because I travel a lot with my family since I was a young kid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, we spend a lot of time like summer vacation, winter vacation, or Chinese New Year. We just okay. want to go out to explore some other places. Okay. And wherever we go, we always stay in a hotel. Mm -hmm. That's why when I was young, I just like to stay in a hotel Everything is so nice, the place is so beautiful, and all the staff are nice to me. Maybe I'm just a kid, <laughs> so they are nice to me. <laughs> and I'm just feel curious about the place that they work. Mm -hmm. So that's why after I graduated from the school, I decided to step in this industry. Okay, so what is it about the industry that you like so much um, that actually drew you into it? I think that is the teamwork because I think people who work together and they always wear smell. So mm -hmm. let me think that this place is so comfortable mm -hmm. and so welcome, so warm. Okay, wow, that's nice. It's nice to have a childhood dream that you have realized, right? <laughs> okay. Um, so, Cindy, you've been working in hospitality for six years now. And um, what is your most memorable incident at work to date? Well, um, actually, today I have two incidents to share with you. Oh, great. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. <laughs> so one is more tend to be like software issue and the other one is hardware issue. Okay. So I take the hardware one first. Okay. Um, well, I, I still remember that time I worked as an evening duty manager. Mm -hmm. And around like 7 or 7.30 in the evening, I noticed that the Wi-Fi shut down because we used the duty phone which is connected to the hotel Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. So I just informed my IT manager that to fix the problem because I know it's about the time that he was off duty. So mm -hmm. I asked him to mm -hmm. fix it before he left the, ho left the hotel. Mm -hmm. And then like half an hour later, he reported to me that everything is fine. And I just prepared to type my log, you know, the, the duty manager's log. Mm -hmm. And just when I typed half of it, one of my colleagues just rushed to the office and asked me to answer one of the phone calls which I have no idea why the security team, they called to the concierge instead of my duty phone mm -hmm. and just informed that there might be some fire incident within the hotel. And okay. I just rushed to the scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I can see a lot of smoke, but not yet see the fire. Mm -hmm. And some security guy just then stood by the side of some machines and I just asked what happened and they said they have no idea. Mm -hmm. So I just asked where's the duty engineer because he mm -hmm. must know the problems better than us. Mm -hmm. Ever at the moment, I cannot contact with the engineer department. No, no matter, I made a phone call, I used walkie-talkie, no mm -hmm. one answered. Mm -hmm. And security guy just oh, looking at me and said, what should we do now? <laughs> no one knows what to do. Because at that time, the hotel is like, just open less than two years. Just one mm -hmm. and a half, I think. Mm -hmm. So there's no really ERT team running. Mm -hmm. There's no simulation for the ERT team. Mm -hmm. So people don't know what to do at the moment. Mm -hmm. But I'm lucky that I learned it from the other hotel, <laughs> from my first hotel. <laughs> okay. I make the decision. I say, call the 911. Mm -hmm. And I the person that in charge to, for the situation. Okay. So I just wait for the 911 here and ask them to do the preparation, like um, preparing the fire extinguishers and to prepare the fire hose, something like that. And then I rush to the main entrance and to guide the firefighters to the locations that we found the smoke. Mm -hmm. And also at the same time, I have to inform my front of team to be calm if any gas notice the alarm from the fire, you know, the cars come in, there will be the, the alarm. Mm -hmm. Just ask them, do not panic. Everything mm -hmm. is in control. They can just stay in the room at this moment. Because um, we 
for the building, the smoke we found is on the other sides, will not mm -hmm. affect to the main building at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, okay. but after the firefighters came, they found out that the smoke was extracted from other places. It's mm -hmm. from one of our engineering room, mm -hmm. and they, and part of it was burnt. Yeah. And then okay, so the, the smoke is okay. So the smoke came from the engineering room. Yeah, but but we don't know why the the smoke just came down to the basement. So mm -hmm. we we just stood by at the basement, but actually it happens in all the buildings, engineering rooms, like around sixth floor, I think. Mm, I see. Um, so it's not from your hotel, but it was from a neighboring it's back building. Of the hotel. Ah, it's at the back of the hotel. A shopping mall near, just connected to the hotel. I see. Okay. Great. Yeah. So you saved the fire situation. <laughs> yeah, but it, <laughs> it's just the beginning because after that, the electricity shut down. <gasps> okay. Mm -hmm. And okay. it affects all the buildings, all the hotel guests. So yeah. that is my real <laughs> workplace. <laughs> so I have to go back. So I just put a place to for firefighters to to solve the the issues and help me to check that the surrounding because I have to make sure that everything is safe for my all my guests and colleagues. Mm -hmm. So I go back to my reception. Exo mm -hmm. because there's no electricity, only the reception desk mm -hmm. can still have some spare power for like for computers mm -hmm. and other things. Just can use at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I have to direct them who will be in charge to contact with the guests. Mm -hmm. to, like we have to arrange the guests to all the hotels. Mm -hmm. And I have to be the person to come down all the guests because some guests will feel so panic. Mm -hmm. Even screaming, crying mm -hmm. at the corridor. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, just like the movie. Yeah. I still remember a guest just holding me tightly and said, we're going to die. It's just like the Hollywood movie. I said, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> not. Oh my goodness. Yeah, wow. So I go up and down to 16th floor, 17th floor, over the stairs to to take some gas uh, down to the to the first floor because they mm -hmm. cannot stand to stay at the at the floors. But mm -hmm. actually at the time if the guests stay in their rooms is much more safe. Because mm -hmm. I don't want them to risk to take the elevators or take mm -hmm. the stairs. Maybe they will just run into some places that are stuck inside. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. So, but I'm so lucky that that day, all my agents are so helpful. Mm -hmm. Although there's no other managers on duty, there's only me duty manager, because the other department manager all left home because it's already off duties for the morning shift or mm -hmm. the regular office hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just work as a team to send a guest to the other hotel to come the guest and I also report to the XCOM team. It's so nice that most of the XCOM team they came to the hotel. Mm -hmm. Although they cannot um, work like us to come the guest, but they they are they are just at a place and let me feel so safe. Mm -hmm. If I cannot handle anything, I can just have some maybe consult with them. Yeah. And my finance manager gave me the <laughs> The highest power that she said, wave all the room transport that night for all the in house guests. Oh my God, wow, that's okay. Okay. She just gave yeah. me this instruction. You can just wave the, all the charts. Mm -hmm. And I just tell my managing director, because that time we don't have general manager nor resident manager. Mm -hmm. So I just make the decision and report them that I will just open my lobby lounge as a free floor place. Mm -hmm. I send all the guests there and ask the banquet team to take some more chairs and tables. Just let the guests have some some place to sit. Well, we are still fi still finding out the way to fix the electricity problem. Yeah, um, I think around like four or five hours later, the electricity back to work. Mm -hmm. That I'm so happy, and I send some of the guests who just insist not to leave the hotel, send them back to their room one by one. By one. Mm -hmm. And I never thought that because the next day I thought I was like receiving a lot of complaints that what happened to a five star hotel, it shouldn't be happened here, mm -hmm. but, I, but I didn't receive that much. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm so happy that I even received a compliment from the guest says, oh, thank you for helping me to go downstairs and thank you for helping me to find something in my room where there's no electricity, I have to climb the stairs. I'm so happy that I received more compliments than complaints. Oh my God, my heart, Cindy. <laughs> I'm so happy and I'm so proud of what you have done, even though it's probably a few years ago. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> that's a nice story. Thank you. And you say you have a second story. <laughs> you have a second yeah, story to share? Story. The second one, well, um, there's a guest, um, they're a couple. Mm -hmm. They're a couple um, from India. Mm -hmm. And they book a room at the executive floor at first, mm -hmm. and they kept asking a lot of things, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. They want to make sure that everything will be, will be good as mm -hmm. they expect. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I understand, like, and they, they said they have to, we have to prepare everything well in the room. Mm -hmm. But after a lot of emails and phone calls, and they asked the reservation team that they want to meet with our general manager upon arrival. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we still not yet have general manager on duty. Mm -hmm. So our reservation team just tell them that duty manager will be the person in charge. Mm -hmm. As there's no general manager and the guests just get crazy and just shouting at our reservation team, nor front of this team through phone calls because mm -hmm. they make phone calls almost every day, mm -hmm. like three four phone calls a day. We just know that, well, must be a difficult to handle guest mm -hmm. we are facing. Mm -hmm. And that day, the time um, they will arrive is my also my duty. <laughs> also in my duty time. Okay, so I just make sure that the room is nice, well prepared. And I actually, I noticed that they pay quite high rate compared to the other guests on the same day. So I actually just do the curse step to the room for them. Mm -hmm. Well prepared, everything is inside. And they also booked the hotel limousine. And I asked them, the hotel limousine, to prepare a nice driver just to welcome them. I need an experienced one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but right, before, right after they meet with the airport rep and they just made a phone call to the hotel and complain, and complain that the car is what is not that they want. They say it's not a Mercedes Benz. But actually, we did send this Mercedes fans. I have no idea how come they, they said that. So I just um, will prepare everything and stand by at the at the main entrance to wait for them arrival. Right before the car just arrived in front of me, I greet them. I greet the miss um the ladies first and then the gentlemen. But they just seem seems that they didn't see me and just walked through the entrance. And shouting at the lobby, said, "Where's the duty manager who just spoke with me?" <laughs> then I saying at the back, said, "I am the duty manager." Mm. <laughs> I just I already stood there to welcome mm. them, but they think I'm not. Mm -hmm. Then I just uh, took them to a place to have a seat first, because I know they are still like quite angry. I've, but which we don't, we have no idea how come. It, so I just asked them, is there anything that I can help? And as I can see, the car is also the Mercedes man that you book. Mm -hmm. And he just didn't mention anything about the car anymore. <laughs> and tell, and they told me that they are here to attend the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did have a mice at that time. Mm -hmm. And I finally I realized that the wife will join in the mice group as a like, speaker of mm -hmm. some like seminar or something. Mm -hmm. And the group has already booked two nights for her, mm -hmm. and they just want to have some time to do the um, like local tour in Taipei City. So they book like two more days before the meeting starts, mm -hmm. and also like one one or two days after the meeting has end. Mm -hmm. And they just want to make sure that everything is good. They want to stay in the same room. They don't want to re um, move from the A room to B room just because the um, group just only reserve like the regular room for them. So I said, everything will be fine. I would just make sure that you stay in the same room as I do the room um, upgrade for you. Just would you like to have a look first? And of course, um, they just, maybe they want to ask for some more things, you know. <laughs> and I just keep calm and just wait for the shouting at a, at a 
at the lobby for around like half an hour or one hour. And after they just get tired, I'll say, okay, it's my turn to say more. <laughs> I just introduce that, how I arrange their rooms. And then I say, if you can give me an opportunity to show the room first, then maybe you can know the, how much effort we have put inside for your, to plan your arrival. Mm -hmm. And like just says, um, and, and the gentleman still says that, oh, I already also booked another room at the Mandarin Oriental Taipei. Mm -hmm. If the room is better, then I just walk, walk away. I say, okay, I respect your decisions. But then I just walk um, escort them to the room to show them. And they're quite satisfied with the room. Of course, it's a sweet room. I offer mm -hmm. them and with a nice view for them. Mm -hmm. And I also ask them their preference for the flutes because I can prepare the welcome flute mm -hmm. just what they like not just like um, what I want to give just mm -hmm. give them mm -hmm. and then they also have some I think they they would like to have like butler service have someone mm -hmm. to take care of their request and also to help them plan their tour or the meeting within the hotels mm -hmm. so after I spent like two hours with them they gradually okay, they decided to stay and cancel the room at the Mandarin Oriental Taipei and I also asked them that, is there any preference for the housekeeping? Because I know mm -hmm. it's just a beginning. I would, I would like to do more just to, in case mm -hmm. they like, have a smooth stay with this. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, well, there's also some issues happens during the stay. And I also give them my roster. I said, mm -hmm. um, among your stay, which day I would be morning shift and other days I would be evening shift. I gave them all my rosters and says, Whatever, whenever you need, just let, let my colleagues know, they will contact me. Mm -hmm. So that week I spent most of time with them to take good care of them. And like around two or three days later, they're so happy. And whenever they call to our operator, they just say, I want to speak with Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know it's tired, but it's so, so likely they recognize mm -hmm. what I have done for them. Mm -hmm. And the last day they left because um, today I'm off. So I prepared um, a farewell card for them, mm -hmm. a handwriting card for them, and just gave to my colleagues that please hand it to them upon departure because I was, want to make sure that everything is so smooth, even a departure. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that uh, after they check out, I think one or two days later, um, the gentleman made a phone call to to the hotel and find me and said that they did have a good stay within the, within the stay and mm -hmm. they're so happy they have a great time and thanks for my help. I'm so happy that <laughs> I get the recognitions from mm -hmm. them. Although people like some of the colleagues said they just want to find fault out of us and ask for something for free, free upgrade, free food, free lounge access. I said, yes, of course, they want to have some more, but you can see as, as long as we do our best, they are also nice to us. Mm -hmm. they, are not has they do not hesitate to give compliments to, like, to us. And, and they even says some, share some good things with my lounge staff. Mm -hmm. I think that is the most <laughs> memorable <laughs> things that I still remember. And I'm so happy that I gone through of those things. Oh my goodness, wow. Cindy, I think it's always very hard when we meet guests that, um, you know, really test our patience, right? And, um, right? and actually, I think it's, I love that the way you thought about the situation, like, okay, this guest may be very demanding and, um, you know, asking for like the heaven and earth, right? And, um, mm -hmm. and you had the heart to take care of them you know, no matter what they have done and without judgments. Mm -hmm. That is so beautiful. That's such a beautiful story, Cindy. I feel so happy <laughs> to hear that story because I think a lot of times we don't understand our guests enough and we make the first judgment and, you know, when we give like a negative response, they return even more reg negative response to us. But because you were so sincere and like, you know, positive with them, they also returned the positivity back to you. That's so beautiful. Thanks for sharing that story with us. Um, okay, so yes, uh, let's talk about the next question here. Uh, what is one thing that you would like to keep in this hospitality industry? And what is one thing that you would like to change or you hope to see will change in the future of hospitality? 
I think one thing that I still keep doing will be positive thinking. Because <laughs>、mm-hmm. every day there are a lot of moody guests who just want to challenge our, <laughs> just challenge our like the bottom line.、Mm-hmm. So always keep positive thinking will make me have more power, more energy to work with, and to provide the best service to them.、Mm-hmm. To spend like more. More time to realize what they really want.、Mm-hmm. That is really important. So I always tell my team that you need to carry on the positive thinking.、Mm-hmm. If you think negative, then you ruin your whole day already. You cannot smell from your heart. Everyone you saw, you just think that they are so bad and they are just finding fault on me. No,、mm-hmm. I don't think so.、Mm-hmm. I still think there will be some nice guests.、Mm-hmm. So always keep positive thinking. I think that is the most important thing that support me to work through these six years. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Okay.、Mm-hmm. And one thing you would like to change, or you hope to see changes in the future? I think that、um, that thing I want to change is like、um, the salary in this industry. Because、mm-hmm. um, I work as an AFOM. I also have to do some interview with those.、Um, when we do the hiring for the people, I do、uh, or the interns.、Mm-hmm. The salary is the most、um, challenging thing because it's not compatible with other industry.、Mm-hmm. Sometimes I I know that this candidate is so nice. I really want them to join my team,、mm-hmm. but when it comes to the salary, half half. Of them, half half of them will just decide not to come because、mm-hmm. completely low, really.、Mm-hmm. And our work hour is so long.、Mm-hmm. Sometimes twelve hours. Sometimes I even do like sixteen hours a day.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, sounds so crazy, but I don't know why. Because if the guests just want some help, I just put out all my effort to help them. Even forget the time just pass by so fast.、Mm-hmm. So、yep. I think the people who can join in this industry really have the passion.、Mm-hmm. They need passion and can afford like a negative <laughs> attack from the guests. Because、mm-hmm. so、sometimes guests is not meant to attack you, but maybe they just been through like being blamed by their families, friends, or they broke up with their、um, boyfriend or girlfriend, something.、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They just want to give out those negative things, and、mm-hmm. we are just big person to <laughs> a. Mm-hmm. That just received a bombard,、mm-hmm. received blitz. So we really need to get a full passion to serve the guest, and also keep positive thinking that the police not for me. Just get it out, <laughs> get it away from me. <laughs> okay.、Um, so Cindy,、um, you feel that the salary needs to be changed. It needs to be co- comparable to industry. Um, like a, a starting pay salary, like let's say a fresh grad is going to get、uh, X amount, and and、um, you know hospitality should also have the same kind of、uh, base salary, isn't it? Yeah. Sure.、Mm-hmm. And you think from that we will be able to attract much better people? Sure, because、mm-hmm. you know every people are thinking about to have a good life, and of、mm-hmm. course we find. A good job to work for,、mm-hmm. and of course we work for salary. You know,、mm-hmm. yeah. And it's so sad that、um, if they even cannot afford their daily life, how can they choose our industry? Our industry, yes,、yep. correct.、Mm-hmm. Great. Yep. Let's hope for change for this one. <laughs> let's hope for change. Great. <laughs> okay.、Um, my favorite question. Out of all the five questions we have today, would be what is your one word core value that you use in your daily life when you're at work?、Um, that one word I also put on my name tag. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot. Of,、uh, we don't put the title on it、okay. on our name tag. We just put like Cindy, and、yeah. then they will put the, something that you want to put on. Maybe some people just put like a place that they like. Mm-hmm. I put a word that I like is carpet dim. It's a lot of work. Yeah, carpet dim. Seize the day. Seize the, the day.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. So at the moment. 
Live in the moment. Okay. So wh why, why carpe diem? Why seize the day? Why is this your core value? I think um, during our daily life, we cannot imagine what will be next coming to us. Mm -hmm. So maybe today this guest coming to me, um, maybe it's just, the, it's also the last time. Mm -hmm. Maybe he will not come back to stay in Taipei anymore. So if it is the once happened in his life, then I would like he like him or her to ha really enjoy the stay with this. Mm -hmm. That's why I really think that carpet dim is the most valuable thing in my mind. Mm -hmm. Just wow. since the day, since the time that we sharing mm -hmm. at the same place. That is really beautiful. And actually, that's a very uh, interesting way to explain Carpe Diem in, in hospitality's terms, you know, mm -hmm. because every moment you share with the guests right in front of you or your customers right in front of you, that is the moment that you have to seize. Because if they walk away, then you have lost the opportunity. So we have to make the Perfect. most out of every interaction. That's beautiful. Wow, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing your, your core value with us. Okay, Cindy, so that's the end of our interview today. Thank you so much for joining me on Heartbeats. I love your stories, and I think everybody would also feel the love and the positivity that you have. And um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for listening. <laughs>